It's literally a one-page document that looks like this, voluntary waiver of firearm rights. In Washington State, you could fill out this form and submit it to the county clerk. It doesn't even ask for a reason. It just lets you know that, quote, effective immediately, you may not purchase or receive any firearm. You may revoke this voluntary waiver of firearm rights at any time after at least seven calendar days have elapsed since the time of filing. According to State Senator Peterson, as of a year ago, there were 20 signed waivers in the system statewide. It's unclear if that actually stopped anyone, though, from buying a weapon, ever, in any state. Results were similar in Virginia, where State Senator Scott Surville, who helped author the law, estimates that between 30 and 40 people took advantage of the do not sell list last year. But remember, this doesn't apply to the weapons people already own, I, I think. It just prevents them, in theory, from buying a new weapon. But here to explain to me why I am underestimating these laws. We have the legislators I've just mentioned from both sides of the political aisle. Joining us now, Virginia Democratic State Senator Scott Suravel, who helped pass the legislation in his state. Also with us is U.S. Republican State Representative from Utah, Steve El Elison, sorry, Elison, who sponsored the legislation there. Um, thank you both for coming on the program. Appreciate it. Mr. Elison, let me start with you. Um, you know, what made you look at this law in Washington state and say it's something that we need in my state? And tell me why you think I am underestimating the value of this. Sure. Thanks, Dan. Um, I was uh, brought this idea from uh, an individual who's a college professor who suffers from a severe mental illness. And while he's you know, an extremely intelligent individual, he says that when he is going through a, a cycle of his illness, he's not thinking clearly and that this type of law could, could save his life. We know that we have 20 to 25,000 admissions every day into emergency rooms for a psychiatric crisis. And this bill gives those, those, worker, those healthcare workers an opportunity to talk with the patients to say, you know, when you're discharged, let's talk about what things you, you can do now to protect yourself when you're out of the safe setting of the hospital to protect yourself from suicide. And so that's where I, I got the idea. And it's it started working in Utah. I am making a few tweaks this, this coming legislative session. But there are tens of thousands of opportunities every day in America in a trusted setting between a clinician and a patient to say, let's talk about the future and keep you safe. An important clarification is that this applies not only to the ability to purchase firearms, but to possess firearms because their mm. name goes on the federal register. So that clinician can talk about, let's talk about how we're going to remove those firearms from your house. Um, and you're not, you're on the do not purchase list. So they should not have access to weapons for 180 days. All right. So, so if they're on this list, then someone can go in and take away the weapons that they had there if they put themselves on this list, right? They could. The plan would be, though, to talk about how we're going to proactively do that because they're wanting to do this to keep themselves safe. Right. Um, all right, Senator Surabell, I mean, this feels very th theoretical, right? It feels like a sort of nice idea where people go in and sounds like a handful of people have. Has there been any case so far in any state where there's actually evidence that it's prevented someone from going and getting a weapon in a way that they shouldn't have? I'm not aware of any example where it's actually uh, where somebody's actually violated it or there's been a, a, a purchase that was triggered by this law. I mean, I, I will say that, you know, I was pr also approached by the professor and and, I, you know, in Virginia, we're a part time legislature. I practice law I have for 26 years and I've represented people on both sides of the of um, mental illness. And I've seen what, you know, for example, bipolar illness can do. And, you know, while some people get their bipolar illness under control with medication. Sometimes they need adjustments. They go off the rails and it takes a while to get them back on board. And, and so this kind of bill, this kind of law prevents somebody from doing something stupid in that situation when maybe their meds need to be adjusted or they're not under control and their family has enough time to get them, get them back on the rails to where it might prevent, you know, somebody from hurting themselves. Do you think it's unfair that I'm saying that it feels like a feel good law with little practical application? Uh, I think a, a lot of people don't understand it when you explain it to them, especially people that don't have experience with mental illnesses that are cyclical. Most people feel like, you know, with mental illness, you're either 
mentally ill and it just keeps on going. They don't understand that, for example, something like bipolar can come and go or you can medicate it and they need adjustments. And, and so for people that don't live that every day, it's hard to appreciate. Um, I would also just say that from my perspective, I think this is a tool that psychiatrists can use to talk to their, their patients as they move through the process. And I think there'll be growing acceptance of it. I've also thought that, for example, it might be a tool that could provide comfort in some other situations. Like, for example, in child custody cases, it might be something somebody could offer to do to give somebody mm. a sense of comfort for child custody kit trial or something. That's case interesting. Or something like that. that's, a, that's, so, a, that's, that's an interesting idea. All right, look, I'm not opposed to this. I just wanted to hear more about it, and that's why I really appreciate both of your time. Thanks so much for coming on the program. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find News Nation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.